Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Gavin. I'm a registered nurse in Ethiopia with a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you're already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe now. Hit the notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that will really have a know that you like to see more contents like this without further ado guys let's jump into the video hi everyone isang panibagong friday discussion nga ang ali ko sa inyo for today and i know that it's been like what a month <laughs> since the last time i uploaded i am so sorry for the inconvenience and for the la delayed uh uploads i've been really battling with you know a lot of things lately wow but anyway, no worries because I am back and like you are seeing on your screens, today is another entry natin um, sa ating uh, playlist which we are calling I See You Drips and this time we are talking about I See You Drips Sedation. Yes, if you haven't watched the other, the very first video I created where I actually talk about um, vasopressin. Um, I'll be putting the actual playlist link on the description box or, or whenever the icon button pops out. Click the one out because I'll be putting it there uh, together with this and some of the other playlists I have on my channel. Now before I further proceed you guys, I would just like to grab this opportunity to thank you who's watching right now, who's listening to me right now for making it possible to reach to almost tw more than 20,000 subscribers. We really made it, guys. That's a goal met in our community here. And none of that will happen if it wasn't because of all your support. You know, when you give it a like, when you comment to my videos, when you share it to your social media platforms, that really helps the algorithm to of my channel to get it out there to the you know the world or to the philippines other so that the other nurses and other nursing professionals will be aware that there's such channels like this and i want to grab this time for me to thank you really thank you so much for making my dreams come true you guys are amazing and yeah if you haven't watched the other videos I upload on my channel, I'll be putting the playlist link on the description box. Click the one out. Now, if you haven't known me, my name is Neil Gavin. I have a medical surgical master's in medical surgical nursing. And I'm currently getting my tenureship in ICU. Oh, yes. So, this is very dear to my heart because most of the time we give this to our patients. This is all about IC drips sedation. Now, as you can see, we're going to be talking about, I actually created this note for myself and I'm planning to share this to you guys in a PDF file. If you wanted to, just let me know on the comment section below. I will figure out how will I share to you my, my um, you know, my reviewers soon um just so you can have it with you a copy but today is all about icu sedation and we're gonna talk about these three um three questions and you can expect that this is just the first the part one of our sedation icu drips uh lecture because you gotta watch out for the next discussion because i'm going to talk about the actual drugs that are used to induce sedation so first up, I'm not going to go on any further. We're going to answer the question, what is sedation? So sedation are normally given to what? Patients who are uh, having or experiencing severe uncomfortability or those patients who are anxious. Typically, th these patients are in the ICU. Those critically ill, uh, Ill patients, it's more likely, more likely, likely, like a hundred percent, that they're having discomfort, they're feeling uncomfortable and anxious. That's why we give sedation. Now, it's very important for you to understand that sedation is different from analgesia. Hence, we are giving pain relief first prior of going to the uh, the world of sedation. Because sedation is different from analgesia in a way that it uh, on its effect. The main goal of sedation, which we're going to talk about later on in this discussion, is all about inducing sleep. I'm going to talk about some of the... Um, indications why we administer sedation to our patients okay so these is patients who are what 
Patients who are uncomfortable, we give sedations to those patients who are uncomfortable and anxious, all right? Now, it's important for us to provide pain relief first prior of going to to uh, giving sedatives to our patients. Now, sedatives, these are some of the concepts that I want you to be really particular or to be very aware of when it, when we are talking about sedatives. Do not give any sedative to your patients if you don't know these concepts, all right? So sedatives, these are group of medications that are used to what? Reduce anxiety. What else? This decreases uh, awareness of noxious stimuli and, um, and induces sleep. And like I said, sedatives do not address pain obnoxious or noxious stimuli these are the you know those type of stimuli that can really trigger the agitation and discomfort of your patients all right like i said sedatives are used to what induce sleep let me just adjust this one napunta siya sa ilalim all right okay doke all right are we clear on that very good so um, sedatives also ensure tolerance to intervention and treatment. Why? What do I mean by this? Some of our patients in the critical area, in the ICU, if you may say, we are given sedatives prior of what? Intubation, prior of, prior of inserting central line. These are the some of the great examples. Intubation, ETT insertions, central line insertion, central line insertion. What else? Um, examples, one good example is um, upper endoscopy. In the critical care, we do that on the bedside, upper endoscopy. Those are the scenarios when we give sedations to our patients because we want them to be relaxed. We want them to be to not be able to somehow remember what happened to them. But I'm going to talk about that in a much more deeper level on the uh, uh, later part of this discussion. Also, we give sedation for clinical stability. If you want to promote stability to our restless patients uh, due to tachycardia or desaturation, the physician or whatever their preference to might order sedatives to your patients. Also, to protect from self-harm. Some patients who are severely restless, severely anxious, have the ten tendency to hurt themself, uh, themselves or hurt the staff. So those patients who are combative. So you want to introduce sedation to them, um, uh, uh, you know, in with your doctor's order. And it depends on the hospital policy and the SOP. But normally sedatives are given um, by two, uh, two nurses independently. We call it double independent checking. You want to check the dose and the drug. All right. We're going to talk about that more later on. Now, this is very important for you to understand. I want you to pay attention on this part. Now, you have to attempt to use or eliminate the use of sedatives at all to your patient. All right. Why? Because this is this uh, to eliminate the long term effect, the long term side effect of sedation, which is delirium. So as much as possible, you want to win off the patient from sedatives or totally eliminate it, all right? So these is uh, these are some of the concepts that answer the question, what is sedation? I hope you guys understand this. Now, moving on, we're going to proceed to answer, why do we use sedation? Now we are talking about what? You guys ready? We are talking about here the indications, Indications. All right. Are we clear? Indications of your sedation. All right. So to whom are you going to give sedatives? What are those patients who you can expect that the doctor might order sedatives? Let me just change my position here. All right. Okay. You guys following? Very good. So... These are six, I list down six um, indications or six reasons why we give sedatives to your patient. The first one, listen up, we have amnesia. 
amnesia because some procedures or surgeries uh, or invasive interventions that is being done to your patient, you really want, you don't want them to be awake while you're, example, inserting ETT. That's very traumatic, you guys. ETT or inserting central line. Uh, central line. Okay, so you want them to be, uh, sit, you want to sedate them. And, but however, I want you to put in mind that this is not the sole, uh, what you might call this? Let me change my, the color. This is not the sole, uh, indication why are you going to give sedation to your patient if you just want your patient to not remember anything despite or even though there's no any invasive procedure or surgeries that you're gonna do to them this is not the sole reason sedation is contraindicated all right but in line to any um um what's this uh invasive procedures or interventions you might wanna or the doctor might wanna consider giving sedatives now with exceptions to paralytic agents now moving on you can always see that some patients who are on ventilator automatic they have what sedations why because when patients are on um um what's this uh on mech vent sometimes they develop intolerance so you want to promote ventilator tolerance by administering and starting an iv infusion bolus or an um, IV infusion or bolus or continuous IV infusion. So, what are the reasons why you want to introduce um, sedation or sedative to your patients who are on MECBENT? For some instances or some cases where there's ineffective, dyssynchronous, or excessive respiratory effort. And you know that when these things happen, these three these three happen to your patient, you can expect that what? There is an increase, what? An increase work, uh, work of breathing to your patients, thereby increasing the oxygen consumption or demand to your patient. And having that while they're on MECVENT, your patient can end up having respiratory arrest. You don't want that. Now, some doctors may all, all, uh, only administer it as bolus, or they could have it like the typical scenario you can see is that they're administering continuous IV infusion. All right. So it's very important for you to um, check with your doctor what is the, the desired order or the desired dose to your patient. All right. Next is why do we give sedation to our patient? Because they're uh, having increased level of anxiety and fear. Now, let me just say this to you guys. This part is actually difficult to to determine because in patients on who are in critical care in the ICU or CCU um, some of them are basically below GCS uh, what's this GCS 10 and their level of consciousness is something that you cannot really um, depend on and rely on that's why we have to assess for signs and behaviors of your patients now these are the signs and symptoms of your uh, of your patients that could what that could tell you that your patient is probably having increased level of anxiety and fear so if your patient is having distress or is distress or showing signs of agitation let me change my pen color here. Signs of distress, agitation, uh, thrashing. What do you mean by thrashing? Uh, self uh, beating someone, hurting someone. That That's what you mean by thrashing. Diaphoresis or facial grimace. Or it could be increased blood pressure and heart rate. These are some of the signs that could tell you that your patient is having anxiety and fear. All right, so we're done with the we're done with the three indications. Now we're moving on to this to these last three. The fourth one is safety and agitation. You want to give sedatives to your patients who have the tendency to hurt themselves and is showing severe agitation. Now these are the criteria. If your patient is unhelpful or can have potential harm. 
to himself or to the staff, that's the time that the doctor, the doctor or you as a part of the interdisciplinary team can decide to put the patient on sedatives. Now, what are the the uh, criteria that you have to think about or to think uh, that will tell you that your patient is have is danger to himself or to the staff or showing signs of agitation. Episodes of non-purposeful movement, that's one. Severe uh, thrashing. Uh, attempts to remove contraptions, IV lines, ETT, uh, central line, NGT, uh, those kind of stuff. Contraptions, other harmful things, uh, hurting the staff, hurting himself, um, you know, uh, even uh, trying to get out of bed. This get OOB out of bed because of risk of fall. So those are the things that you that will tell you that your patient is high risk or is having severe agitation. Next, uh, next is sleep deprivation. Now this is very common, you guys. Very common in the critical area. So most of the patient may never actually achieve physiologic or achieve the physiologic deep sleep that they need for recovery. That's why some sedatives are being being administered to them. Now, the last one, the last um, indication or reason why we give sedative is due to delirium. All right, so you guys, just uh, just uh, statistics here. 50 to 80% of our patients develop delirium. So um, while you are using a long-term fentanyl, that's why this is very risky. Long-term cognitive effect of sedatives is being proven to patients who are uh, having prolonged use of sedatives. And delirium could be one. And it's really hard to address delirium because some of the patients may show you some signs of delirium, which is, uh, what should I call this, uh, more of like a passive, non-aggressive type of delirium. That's why routine assessment is very important to assess the signs of delirium. Now, there's other medications that you can give to patients who are having delirium except sedatives. You don't want to give sedatives to patients who are having delirium. Why? Because of the long-term cognitive, cognitive effect of the medication to that patient. Instead, you want to give um, medications that are separated in the group of anti-delirium medications. All right? So once again, these are the reasons why you use sedations to your patients. Patients. Amnesia, ventilator tolerance, anxiety and fear, safety agitation, sleep deprivation, and delirium. Are we clear? Very much. Now, we're moving on to our uh, to the last part of this discussion uh, for now. Uh, for the part one of ICU drip sedation, we are now going to talk about the goals of sedation. <laughs> Now, I want you to think about this way. Whenever you administer sedation, you should set a goal as a nurse, as an interdis as the part of the interdisciplinary care or team. You have to ensure appropriate drug and dose for your patient. That's the number one intervention that you have to do in order to what? Achieve the goal of positive outcomes. Okay, now you want to ensure the proper dose. Again, I repeat, a proper drug to use and the dose for your patient in order to provide positive outcome. Now, here's some of the things that you do. You can do as a nurse. First one, you have to... Appropriate dose does not interfere with clinical progress. You have to make sure that the appropriate dose does not interfere with the clinical progress. What do you mean by this? L let's just say that the doctor wants to to check the level of GCS of the patient or the level yeah, the level of GCS of your patient. You want to you don't want to drug that patient to that. You know what I mean? 
So you want to make sure that you adjust the dose, you taper it down um, in line with uh, the desired RAS score. Later on, which is going to be the last topic for this video, I'm going to discuss to you that there's actually a tool that we can use. Next is adjust dose to avoid drowsiness and respiratory depression. You have in the ICU, in the critical care, you have the freedom as part as a nurse, ICU nurse, and the liberty liberty to to what's this to decide uh and to talk to your doctor if you want to increase or decrease the low the depends on your anoa and your sop if you want to increase or decrease start to taper down the patient to your sedatives of course this is um this is in consideration to the clinical presentation, current clinical presentation of your patient. So you have to adjust to av adjust the dose to avoid drowsiness and respiratory depression. Remember that the most common that the most common side effect of your midazolam, fentanyl, propofol is what? Respiratory depression. All right? So you have to monitor your auto saturation and your RR, respiratory rate. Next is maintain calm and awake or easily arousable. That's one of the ultimate goal. The positive outcomes of sedation is to maintain calm and awake patient or easily arousable patient. Meaning easily arousable when you raise your, when you call his name or try to uh, give stimuli by voice. The patient awakes, wakes up or when you introduce pain, to the patient, the patient will wake up, easily arousable. So once again, these are the positive outcomes or the goals that you have to put in mind whenever you uh, administer sedation to your patient. And if there's one tool that I can share to you, which is going to help you achieve this goal, this is the Richmond, Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale. Or as we all know, this is what we call the RAS. RAS. O, oh, diba? RAS. Tagalog na Tagalog. Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale. Now, this is so easy to understand, you guys. I'm just gonna uh, run, um, what's this, uh, run over them to you. Uh, but basically, your RAS is uh, a tool that we use to patients who are on sedation. This is frequently assessed or reassessed depending on your hospital policy. In our hospital, we do it every four hours. Um, uh, there's a template that we kind of like tick and check check to it. But I want you to pay attention that the uh, RASCOR is very important tool in order for you to uh, achieve the positive outcomes of sedation. Why? Because your RAS provides you with a quantifiable uh, datas of assessment which you can work on or which you can use to try to increase or decrease the dose of your sedatives. Now, your RAS score is this. So you have, uh, this is basically 0 to 1, um, negative 5, negative 4, negative, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, one, two, three, and four. All right. So, um, uh, before I further proceed, the basic goal or the your target RAS score. Some doctors will ask you this actually, and you should know. You should know as a nurse, nakakaya kayo. You should know that the normal target or target of Richmond or RAS score is zero, two, what? One. I no no no. Zero to one. Sorry po. Let me erase that one. Zero to negative one. All right. Zero to negative one. Oh, dinoblehan ko pa. This is the normal. What you ma call this? Target RAS score. Di siya mabasa. Target RAS score. This should be your target RAS score to your patient, meaning you will adjust the dose of the medication um, depending on your target RAS score. Some physicians have a preference when it comes to the RAS score that the, the, that they want to a patient. It's important for you to coordinate with them. All right. So 
let's start with negative 5. Negative 5 are those comatose patients. Um, unarousable. Negative 5 is unarousable, meaning no response to voice or physical stimulation. Even if you introduce your voice or you raise your voice or you introduce pain to your patient, no response at all. That is rascar of negative 5. For negative 4, that's too poor. Deep sedations. Patients who are on deep sedation have no response to voice but responds to physical stimuli. What is this physical stimuli? We're talking about pain. All right. So no response to voice but response to physical stimuli. Negative 3 RAS score is moderate sedation. Now, these patients responds to voice but does not make eye contact. Key term, no eye contact tayo sa RAS score of negative 3 but is responsive to voice. Okay? Uh, negative 2 naman is light sedation. Those patients who are on light sedation responds to voice but can only make eye contact. This is the term. The keyword, eye contact of more than or less than 10 seconds, less than 10 seconds, that's light sedation. Now, negative one is drowsy. Drowsy patients respond to voice, so we have positive voice and can make eye contact for what? More than 10 seconds. You see the difference? Negative two, responsive to voice, but can make eye contact less than 10 seconds. This one. Negative 1, drowsy patients can make eye contact more than 10 seconds and it is also responsive to voice. Alert and calm, that's pretty explanatory. I'm not gonna discuss on that. Re alert and calm, come on. Next, positive 1 or 1, anxious but movements not aggressive. Agitated. Agitated patient shows frequent non-purposeful movement. If your patient is this, you will score them Two, very agitated, that, ras that is RASCOR 3. Pulls or removes tubes or catheters. Aggressive behavior is being shown. Meaning, they're trying to remove their contraptions, get out of bed. That is very agitated. Sedate na yan. Combative patients, that's RASCOR 4. Now, these patients are overtly, remember the adjective, overtly combative, violent, danger to staff, code white, mga ganyan. <laughs> okay, so once again, this is your Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale and the goals of your sedation. We covered pretty much a lot on this uh, lecture. We started with what is sedation, the indications of your sedations, the goals of sedation, and that includes the tool that we use, the RAS, uh, the RAS score of, uh, you know, uh, of patients who are on sedative. Now, you have to watch out for the part two of this because that's going to be posted um, in a few days from now. So thank you so much you guys for watching. Again, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Tulungan nyo na nga kayo pamalitan nyo na sa radyong sira ang pinakabago, pinakafresh, at ang pinakalibring nursing review centers sa balat ng YouTube. Do not forget to follow me in all my other social media accounts. Everything is at Neil Gave, except for my TikTok account which is Neil Gave Official. Um, and yeah, I'll see you again uh, next week. You have a good one. Bye-bye.